Hopefully everyone's having a great morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on wherever you're tuning in in the world. My name is EQ and welcome to Stonkaholics. If you're in our VIP group, you might be catching this video on Sunday. If you're not, you might be catching this video maybe a day, maybe a week after. If you want to catch these videos early, make sure to come join our VIP Discord program so you can stay up to date with the latest information and the most up-to-date charting. This video is going to be TA specific. We're going to be focusing on Bitcoin and we're going to be zooming in to see what the charts are going to give us and what we can look to expect for the next coming weeks to months. Because I know a lot of people have questions about Bitcoin and the crypto market as a whole surrounding all the FUD in the world and the wars and everything going on. If we take a look at this weekly chart for Bitcoin, you can see that we have been paying respect to this uptrending support, which is a good thing to see on the weekly. And based on price action alone, we saw a doji last week and we're going to be closing this week, hopefully with an inverted green candlestick which is a great sign for a reversal. Now, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be reversing into the next week. This could go down and hang out, maybe stall out or tap down to this double bottom for the next couple weeks. Similar to what we saw over here, where we saw some indecisiveness and dojis. And as a few weeks go by, we finally test the support and a bottom and start to move back up. This is kind of what we're looking to hopefully see with price action coming from here. If we do not wanna hold the support, we can break down to this double bottom. That's not a far-fetched idea. That will test around the 29k range which is going to make a lot of people happy especially the whales and the ones that want to accumulate take advantage of the billionaires lower wick and things like that and even based on this whole sell-off and trend you can see the adx has been relatively dead we've been within the 25 and under the 25 range which is a dead sign for potential trends and within this moment and within this time the bears have been winning but you can see they are starting to fall out a little bit and the bulls are starting to come back into play now, something critical we're going to be watching is the fast stochastic and the RSI combination relationship. We want to see the fast stochastic break this RSI resistance. If we don't see that happen, price can continue to stall down. But if we do see that stochastic break and potentially hold on top as a support, this RSI could start to move back up and potentially break over the 50 point, which is going to be the midpoint for the RSI and the stochastic. And that could be one of your first potential impulse catalysts that can cause a nice impulse move from this point if we hold support. Now, one thing I do want to keep in mind is that you ha still have some bearish divergences on the MACD. We saw this divergence first take place with the higher high. Meanwhile, your MACD was putting in lower highs and we saw price take a nice little tumble after that point. Now we're seeing something a little bit similar here where your MACD is still trending downwards. Meanwhile, price action is trending upwards. This was one of the potential signs and why I was talking about how we still do have the potential for a couple more months, maybe of sideways movement and even a pullback if we fail to find support and start to move up from this range. Keep in mind, that this is a weekly chart, so this can take months to fulfill, even years potentially, depending on how long and how patient you are and what you're watching for. On the three day chart is where you're starting to see some more of that long term bullish potential. Now, even though the VFI is beat to shit, keep that in mind, we are looking for a potential bottom out on the VFI. We have seen a massive sell-off in the last month, essentially, and price action has been pretty stagnant through this period. So even though we do have this bullish crossover and we do have a buy signal, you need to watch out and be careful for this pullback because the pullback can happen with the VFI looking like this. And even though it might not pull all the way down to 10,000 or 12,000 or wherever you're seeing a lot of these bears want to pull price, we could easily see that 29k pull down and while that is happening we would be doing our price action breakout which if you watch the money pack crossover video you would know that that does have a lot of potential for a fake out move and if this was violent enough and happened fast enough you probably will not see a crossover on the bear side of the money pack crossover based on your adx and dmi as well this trend has been dying out since the bears have been taking over and the lower leg of this run has definitely been dead this could lead to this little fake out that we're talking about of the shorters wanting to come in. Let's say we get down to 29K, the bears might get really hungry and they want to start to add shorts because they're getting FOMO. This is a good area where they can start to get liquidated and we get that short squeeze back up. And the VFI is also telling us a similar story of there is the potential of this not holding. And if this does break down, we're going to want to look for LRC support and this long term double bottom. Meanwhile, the other token of this is that if we do hold support and start to move up, we might see this RSI finally break over this 50 point 
Remember on the last chart how we were talking about the fast stochastic needing to break? We are finally able to break this resistance. We had a lot of trouble breaking this RSI resistance for the fast stochastic. We finally got our break and our support hold. And since we've had that support hold, we can see the volume and the movement of the RSI is starting to uptrend again as we get a buy signal and higher lows. You also have a standard divergence on your MACD. It will look something like this at the moment. Meanwhile, price is looking more of a double bottom. Your MACD is trending upwards on the three day. That is a strong thing to see. So really what we're waiting for is to see what the ADX and DMI want to do. If we want to see this trend start to come back up and pick up in a strong trend. And the other thing we're waiting for is some volume to come in with price action. Now, based on these charts, your VPVR and your POC are still very, very low. So these are still sitting at 11,000 and this is taking into consideration all this accumulation that was happening before the true bull run started to take off. And it's important to keep in mind that even though we do have this bullish crossover, the Nataraya is still maintaining its red color versus in this area where we had the crossover, we are already converting into green with a green confirmation before we actually get that crossover and price action follows. So this will make you want to keep a close eye and to see if this does start to trend green. If not, again, this could be a nice little fake out area and we could continue to push down for the next weeks or months. There's a lot of lot of FUD in the markets right now. So keep that in mind too. Your daily chart is starting to see a lot of volatility. Your daily chart is starting to see a lot of volatility as well. You're starting to see more of these flips and crossovers and fake outs and false signals as we're moving sideways and gaining more volatility. And even though the bears are currently winning the DMI, the ADX is saying that there is not a relatively strong trend at the moment. So there is decent fake out potential. We do have this bearish crossover and a sell signal that is unconfirmed. We will be getting a confirmation in the next three hours on this signal. And this is what other things, and this is another reason why we're talking about on the three day or weekly that you might see a little bit of a pull down because although we are starting to see some strengths on the daily and on the three day, they're not fully there. The VFI is not there on the daily and on the three day, it's definitely not there. And we always want to have the volume flow indicator going strong, or at least showing some sorts of bullish potential before we just jump into those trades. Now, a strong thing we are seeing at the moment, which could easily break under is going to be the fast stochastic. If this can hold support on top of the RSI and move back up, that's a very bullish thing to see. But at the moment, it's looking like we're breaking down and this is going to continue to bring this RSI back under the 50 point, which is probably what is triggering the sell signal at the moment. Since those buy and sell signals are based on the stock bot itself, which is using an HMA and also what you're seeing based on the fast stochastic and RSI. And your MACD is relatively trending at the zero, so this can break in either direction. So definitely keep an eye on the MACD and see which direction this wants to start trending. Let's take a look at the four hour chart real quick. You we are staying over the 25 on the ADX, which is a good thing to see. Now your DMI is still trending for the bears, but they are pulling back under the 25 and the bulls could easily start to make that room up. You're starting to see that fast stochastic take off. Hopefully this is going to bring up the RSI with it. You're looking at a divergence, a hidden bullish divergence on the MACD as well. So you have lower lows on the price action, even though you have higher lows on the MACD. And based on the VFI on the four hour, you're starting to see some bullish activity holding over the zero, which is great. We've already had some activity showing potential in the volatility. And this is looking like we could get a nice little move now. Price is under and in the bear side of this crossover. So what we're saying is that on a short term play, since this is a four hour chart, we could see price potentially push up to test this LRC resistance, maybe around $40,000 range before this wants to come back down. If it does break, we could see the impulse to the POC, which is going to be less likely, but we could push up to around 43.7K and have a very comfortable resistance at the POC which will be the standard volume area for this entire move, or at least the relative recent move. Now, if price does want to push up on the short term and test this resistance on the LRC, this could be a good potential to start entering shorts while we go on a support hunt either to here or potentially a little bit further down into the 30 K range all the way down into this general area. Now we can get some nice wickage in this general area too, from 35 to 36 K if price does want to shoot down fast and come back up more of like a chicken leg configuration. If you don't know about the chicken leg, make sure to come join our discord group. So all in all, this could be a decent play to fulfill our short term and then our medium term, which is going to be a support hunt to either this area or this area. And then our long term where we're holding and fulfilling the supports 
and then finally making a break up for the long term because the daily and the weeklies and the three days are all looking very bullish, but they are long term charts. So you're still going to have to have a little lead room and a little giveaway, especially if you're doing leverage trading, for example, none of this is financial advice, but you want to have lower leverage and lower risk when you're doing longer term trades to give yourself the opportunity for pullbacks. And again, to wrap this video up short term, I think we can make a nice little push up medium term. I do think and I want us to find a critical support either at the 37K or at the 30K ranges. And if one of those supports are able to hold my long term view of Bitcoin is to start going back up. I don't believe we're in a full bear run yet. I know there's a lot of people talking about bear runs and bear cycles and this and that. I don't think we've fully gotten to that point yet. I think we haven't even tested the lowest lows that we were making in June and July of last year. So that's going to be an interesting catalyst point and to see what happens with the accumulation phases within those regions. And keep in mind, there are some major supply and demand zones that are in play at the moment. If you want to see those supply and demand zones, we have those charts within our discord group. Hopefully everyone's having a great morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you're at in the world. If you found anything in this video useful, please make sure to throw a like in the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and go join our discord family. And we will catch you on the next one.